Good evening, St. John's. I was thinking today about the book of Job. I didn't start reading it again, but I think I'm going to. If you're not familiar with the book of Job in the Old Testament, they say it's maybe one of the oldest books of the Old Testament. It starts out with a rather disturbing scene in which God and Satan are up in heaven talking, and God says to Satan, Have you observed my servant Job? There's no one like him on earth as righteous. And Satan tells him, well, that's just because you bless him. If you took all the uh, all his blessings away, he'd curse you. And uh, God says, all right, take all his blessings away and see what happens. That's the disturbing part. So let's just put that aside and move on with the story. Sure enough, he loses everything. He loses his money, loses his health, loses his uh, children. Um, and then here's the fascinating part of the book of Job. Uh, his life is horrible. He's just in misery. And all his companions come along to start giving him advice. And the book is largely just these people giving him advice. And you know what? It's all bad advice. Uh, and the, what makes it so worth paying attention to is the way they're describing or explaining Job's misfortune sounds just the way people today do in our culture. It's human nature. Uh, the gist of a lot of it is, Job, you must have had some secret sin and God's punishing you. And Job kind of like, and so they say like, so re repent, tell God you're sorry or whatever. Job says, there's nothing here to hide. I didn't do anything wrong. Uh, Job's wife tells him, curse God and die, <laughs> which is maybe some good advice from time to time. Um, and you see Job just sitting and waiting. And he endures a whole lot of false theology about God, false accusations about himself. And there's never any explanation provided um, from the human side of what happened. Um, he wasn't being punished. He was just suffering. And what makes me attracted to the book of Job right now, as I think about what's happening in the world, and as I listen to my own spirit, more and more I recognize I just need to sit quietly. There's no peppy solutions. And I don't need a lot of chatter. I don't need lots of uh, programs or shiny things. But I do think I like Job. And when I say I, I say we, all of us. Uh, we just need to learn patience. Uh, to sit quietly. And hopefully at the end of all this, to arrive where Job did, which was to continue to insist that he will trust the Lord. Because if anything is going to come out of this season, I hope what it is, is a deeper faith, a deeper confidence in God that's not based on just continual comforts, but having learned that God can be trusted in all things. I don't need constant amusement or happiness or pleasant things to trust God. That's the kind of lesson I would like to come out of the end of these days, because I know that's what I will need in the future. So I recommend reading Job. I think I'm going to read it tomorrow. Let's pray. The angels of God guard us through the night. And quieten the powers of darkness. The Spirit of God be our guide. To lead us to peace and to glory. It is but lost labor that we haste to rise up early and so late take rest and eat the bread of anxiety. For those beloved of God are given gifts, even while they sleep. My brothers and sisters, our help is in the name of the eternal God. Who is making the heavens and the earth. Dear God, thank you for all that is good for our creation and our humanity, for the stewardship you have given us of this planet Earth, for the gifts of life and of one another, for your love which is unbounded and eternal. O thou most holy and beloved, my companion, my guide upon the way, my bright evening star, we repent the wrongs we have done. We have wounded your love. O God, heal us. We stumble in the darkness. Light of the world, transfigure us. We forget that we are your home. Spirit of God, dwell in us. Eternal Spirit, living God, in whom we live and move and have our being. 
All that we are, have been, and shall be is known to you, to the very secret of our hearts, and all that rises to trouble us. Living flame, burn into us. Cleansing wind, blow through us. Fountain of water, well up within us, that we may love and praise in deed and in truth. Eternal Spirit, flow through our being and open our lips. That our mouths may proclaim your praise. Let us worship the God of love. Alleluia, alleluia. Psalm 121 I will lift up my eyes to the mountains, but where shall I find help? From you alone, O God, does my help come, creator of the ever-changing hills. You will not let me stumble on the rough pathways. You care for me and watch over me without ceasing. I am sure that the guardian of my people neither slumbers nor sleeps. The God of all nations keeps watch like a shadow spread over me. So the sun will not strike me by day, nor the moon by night. You will defend me in the presence of evil. You will guard my life. You will defend my going out and my coming in, this night and always. A reading from Second Corinthians. It is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, to show that the transcendent power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. Into your hands, O God, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O God of truth and love. Keep me, O God, as the apple of an eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Preserve, Preserve us, O God, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake, awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in your peace. Praise, Praise be to God, I have lived to see this day, God's promises fulfilled, and my duty done. At last you have given me peace. For I have seen with my own eyes the salvation you have prepared for all nations, a light to the world in its darkness, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to God, sustaining, redeeming, sanctifying, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. I will lie down in peace and take my rest, for it is in God alone that I dwell unafraid. Let us bless the earth maker, the pain bearer, the life giver. Let us praise and exalt God above all forever. May God's name be praised beyond the furthest star. Glorified and exalted above all forever. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God, the eternal goodwill of God, the shalom of God, the wildness and warmth of God, be among us and between us, now and always. The divine spirit dwells in us. Thanks be to God. Good night, dear Carmen.